best way I know to introduce myself is I'm Dorothy Henson Brent, and uh, I live in Alamosa, Colorado. This is my community, and uh, I'm 84 years old. It's never great for somebody to be diagnosed with cancer of any type, and at the time that I was diagnosed, we were in the middle of a crisis for my husband who has prostate cancer. And this, this was a double whammy <laughs> that we did not need at that time and so forth. Uh, but both of us uh, had a wonderful experience. And his was a real crisis, but mine was not. I was healthy, and I even went to my doctor who had recommended that my age, again, I want to say a wonderful doctor, and said, you know, Dorothy, I don't think it's necessary anymore for you to do a mammogram. And he did not feel that. Uh, he thought, you know, you've never had problems, other something benign from a, a, a test. And he did not feel that. And all of a sudden, I had a, a minor thing. And the best way I know to, to say this, uh, I had not had one for a year, it was time, but the only difference in feeling was that in the in my left breast there was a tingling. And if you had ever had a tingling in your leg or something like if it was asleep, that was the best description I can give you of that. And it was down deep and but but I could feel it. It wasn't even too annoying, but it I knew something was different. I knew it was different there. So uh, I went in and I told my doctor about it, and he looked at my record and he said, well, I, maybe maybe we should do a mammogram. And so we did a mammogram <laughs> and got, got the results on, on breast cancer month, okay? And so it, it, again, we women, we know how our bodies feel, and we know before anybody else usually but we should always be faithful and check and this type of thing to 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 be our best buddy. You know, we when we have a crisis, we look for a best buddy, but we can be our best buddy in whatever it is that we're dealing with. So the he called me when the results of my mammogram and I was at the hospital in Colorado Springs with my husband who was in crisis state. And he said, you don't need this, but <laughs> I think we should tell you this. And Dorothy, you have to get back and do a pre-op, and you have to have surgery. It is breast cancer. And I thought I didn't need that. <laughs> and But anyway, um, I, I didn't let go. There was too much here. There's too much here. I had too much to think about my husband and so forth. But... The, the, I'd like I like to stress this because this was in the middle of one crisis and another one was developing. We did not know what was there, but I was so positive in thinking, okay, we'll get we'll get him home, and now I'm healthy. I'll go get this surgery, and that will be the way it will be, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. And whatever he needs, I'll be there. You know, this is we've been married 65 years, so you know we know how we we feel about these things. So anyway, we got him arranged to get what he needed, and then I set mine up, and on October the 12th, I had my surgery. Not one person recommended I have my surgery here. The people who didn't really know me that well said, oh, I understand you have. Uh, you're not going to have it here. And I said, of course I'm going to have it here. This is my home. These are my doctors. These are my, uh, these are my friends. These are my... And so I thought... Why would I go away in a strange place? What, What's in a strange place I don't have here? I have it in abundance here. And so I, I went to see uh, Dr. Geiger in surgery and talked with him. And they happened to have a visiting woman lady that day from Minneapolis that's an expert in breast cancer. And suddenly I was just overwhelmed with this. They told me that I should see her they recommended I should see her while she was here. And so I thought, that would be great. That would be great. And then it hit me what I am going through here. 
And I went and I said, I'm, I'm supposed to see, I'm supposed to see Dr. Hansen. And the people in the hospital said, I don't know a Dr. Hansen. And I said, well, I was told that I should get, see her. And she said, and they said, we, they got out the list and they didn't know. And, and you know, it's just one of those things. But it wasn't a big deal. But I was, by this time, I was getting that emotional roller coaster and I needed help. So I started walking through the hospital and everywhere I would walk, I knew everybody around there, okay? And the minute I'd see them, I burst into tears. And they said, what's wrong, Dorothy, what's wrong? And I said, well, my husband's in Colorado Springs and I'm here and, you know, and th they put their arms around me and uh, I put my arms around them. I had a good cry until I met the next one and stuff. But that's all it took. That doesn't mean that I'm a crying person, but I wasn't afraid to cry, you know. And it, it, I, each time somebody did this, I just got stronger and stronger. And finally I said, why don't you know Dr. Hansen? I mean, you know, I've been reported to go to see her, and why don't you know? Well, by the time I got to see her, it was it was so exciting. She was a crusty old lady. I hope she doesn't know this, but she was a crusty old lady, and not that old either. And she started talking to me about this, and, uh, and I was just feeling more and more powerful. And she said, uh, Dorothy, I'm not going to give any advice now what you do. Have you decided what to do? And I said, no, I, I just know I'm going to have a mastectomy, if that's what you mean. I'm not, I don't want to go in there and have to follow in. Uh, no, I want it clear. If I were younger, I might think different, but no, I want rid of the cancer. And I'm, well, she said, if you don't worry about that piece of fat that's bouncing around there, then you know, I'm glad you said that, but I'm not advising. And then she told me about Dr. Geiger. And she said, I've sat by him and I've, you know, and he is wonderful. She said, if I had breast cancer, I'd crawl on that table tomorrow for him to do it. And so, so I didn't need that, but it, it was empowering, as you say. It made everything, so everything I touched, it turned to magic in that sense. I had the cancer and I certainly wasn't treating that lightly, you know and so forth. But those are all the little things that make a difference. The people that I knew, we didn't sit down and have long conversations. It was just a moment in time that that that, that power came because that's the way I am in solving things, you know? And uh, so that, that that was really helpful. So anyway, that it's not about me. It's, it's about these people along the way, you know? Um, I have a story in my book, and it's, it's called that, that uh, life is not a destination, but the journey. And this is my journey with carrying this breast cancer around, you know. And all of these people in the image center and everywhere, they never get any feedback except somebody had a problem. And they're caring people. They're really caring. So I, I, I checked into the hospital. Uh, the morning I was supposed to, I had my surgery. I was in the hospital overnight. The next morning, I was discharged with a bottle of pain pills this high, and the doctor saying, now, don't let the pain get ahead of you, because it's very hard to come back. Don't let it get ahead of you. I walked out of that hospital, and I never needed an Advil. I never needed any of that pain medicine. I still have that jar of medicine in case I need it. He said, you know. and But I think all of these people that I came in contact with, if every cancer person that is fortunate enough to come into contact people that take the time and give the hug at the right moment in time and say, you know, this is serious business, but you can handle it, and we'll be there for you, and they, they, they always do this. So anyway, it was this kind of situation. But I came home, and yes, of course, you know, when you, when you have surgery, it, it, you, don't, you don't have all that energy and stuff. But I've never had a problem. They, I have healed completely, perfectly, and uh, you know, and it was done in Alamosa, Colorado. 
where we have wonderful health people. I have seen our hospital change from a tiny little hospital to where it is today. And that's a wonderful feeling to know we have it. We're very fortunate here. We're very fortunate.